What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back out again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who hated their own WrestleMania match. Now, this is an interesting video. I didn't know. Well, I'm sure there's some wrestlers that weren't happy with their WrestleMania match or how it played out. But I definitely want to see what these particular wrestlers had to say about their match that they were involved in. So, this should be a good one. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this one. Performing at WrestleMania should be one of the defining moments of a pro wrestler's career. Mm -hmm. However, over the years, a number of wrestlers have admitted publicly that they strongly disliked one of their WrestleMania matches for a specific reason. This can be because certain spots were cut <laughs> on the match, or it can be the because they feel clip. like their performance didn't meet the WrestleMania standard. Mm -hmm. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10... I definitely know The Undertaker has talked about it in his documentary about certain matches he had at WrestleMania he just didn't like. Like the one he had with uh, Roman Reigns, he just he did not like that one. WWE wrestlers who How actually it out. hated their WrestleMania match. Be well, sure to subscribe wonder if it's and hit be on this notification list. bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. And if you speak or understand Hindi, our new channel, WrestleMania Hindi. Oh wow. WrestleMania, they they getting all the bags. <laughs> Number 10, Jeff Hardy at WrestleMania 25. The two mm. brothers collided at WrestleMania 25 as Jeff and Matt Hardy collided on the grandest stage. The match would be an Extreme Rules match and it was mostly well received, but mm -hmm. Jeff Hardy wasn't pleased. Jeff took issue with how many spots had to be cut from the match and Jesus, according to Jeff during an bro. appearance on the Broken Skull Sessions podcast, this impacted the overall quality of what Jeff and Matt could deliver. Jeff this was did a fun state that match. he did confront Vince McMahon regarding having spots cut from the match, but this was extremely rare for Jeff to confront his boss in this manner. Jeff believes that this earned him respect, mainly because McMahon was aware that his anger was coming from a genuine place. Number 9, mm. The Undertaker at WrestleMania 33. Yep. WrestleMania 33 was designed to be Just The Undertaker's farewell match. He was going to put over Roman Reigns in the main event and sail off into the sunset. But the problem was that the match wasn't exactly the quality fans expected from the dead man. The match was awkwardly paced and The Undertaker botched several notable spots. Taker has even spoken at length in relation to his thoughts on the match and has since labeled the match as disgusting. Mm -hmm. The dead man wasn't happy retiring with a match of such poor quality, and it's hard for anyone to take issue with The Undertaker. That was supposed to be his retirement match. Once he left the hats and the glove, I was like, that's his retirement match. It didn't really, you know, obviously it wasn't that good of a match or whatnot, but, uh, you know, that's originally you can tell that's what it was supposed to be not wanting this match to be his final time on the grandest stage of WrestleMania. The Undertaker was even so ashamed of the matchup that he apologized to Roman mm -hmm. Reigns because he felt so bad for being responsible for such a negatively received match. Mm -hmm. Number 8, Triple H at WrestleMania 32. A Triple H's showdown with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 32 was heavily panned by fans. It was lackluster at best and the match failed to have that spark that's needed in a WrestleMania main event. Facts. A month after WrestleMania 32, the game was asked for his thoughts on the match by the Mirror UK, and with Triple H being a key part of WWE's management team, he had to be extremely careful in what he said. Triple H clearly had issues with the match, and whilst he didn't outright declare that he loathed the match, he did discuss some of the match's shortcomings. Mm -hmm. It was a challenging situation on a lot of fronts. Roman is a unique character in the business and a polarizing character, much like a John Cena or somebody like that. He's a polarizing character. You're in front of a hundred thousand people, and you're also coming up at the end of a six and a half hour plus show. It was long. I was happy with it, but to be honest, I've not watched it back yet. I'm really funny about watching myself back at this point in time of my career. It's hard for me to see the positive sometimes. Hey, Triple H, we know you was tiptoeing around <laughs> around the situation. You, we know. We know. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Number 7, Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania 36. At WrestleMania 36 was a massive disappointment for mm -hmm. several reasons. The main reason was that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, a WWE were forced to present their biggest show of the year in front of zero fans at the Performance Center. Additionally, some of the match outcomes on the two-night event left a lot to be desired. Take for instance when Charlotte Flair defeated Rhea Ripley to win the NXT title. This win was completely pointless and yeah. fans were quick to criticize the booking decision. According to Ripley during an appearance on Lillian Garcia's podcast, the match badly impacted her confidence. It did feel like that though. I definitely like have gone through a stage where I did start losing the confidence in myself mm -hmm. because 
I just wasn't portrayed the same way that I was, you know. Um, I started like even now, like I'm I'm still slowly like building myself back up from it. Um, my confidence definitely was like tainted a little bit, which sucks because I try and like keep it up and do my best all the time. Um, I don't know if it was just something inside my head that just wasn't like getting the picture, but like I don't know, I just. I got a little bit lost after that. Number six. Unfortunately, she did get lost after that because once she lost that match, it's like she was kind of stuck in limbo. But it's crazy what time can do. Now she is probably one of the most over women in WWE right now. She's one of the hottest for sure, like in a sense of like fan popularity. And they got to do it right, bro. If she doesn't win this match, what's the What's the effing point, bro? Honestly, it's really Rhea and Dominic that make Judgment Day what it is. It, it's really them two, honestly. And really, to be honest with you, Rhea. She is literally in the best situation possible. People find her to be cool. And then, of course, there's people that just love the way she looked now. So, she got to win. She has to win this weekend. I'm going to do my previews and predictions uh video so be on the lookout for that but she gotta win it's simple as that she doesn't win against charlotte the story here is pointless she needs to win six dean ambrose at wrestlemania 32 and when wwe announced that dean ambrose would be taking uh, yeah, on Brock lesnar at wrestlemania 32 lackluster i Lesnar was would be a no holes barred street i was fight, so excited expected a full-on war sadly the match was incredibly lackluster and it failed to meet anyone's standards According to Ambrose, Lesnar shot down every yeah, Lesnar idea he Lesnar had trying to do nothing. Lesnar just wanted to do generic <laughs> things that fans had seen a thousand times before. The former WWE champion would go on to call Lesnar lazy, which was a bold yet seemingly justified comment. It's clear that Ambrose strongly dislikes the match, and it's a massive course. shame as it had so much potential to be a WrestleMania classic. It could have. Number five, Mick Foley at WrestleMania 20. One of the top matches on the WrestleMania 20 card saw Mick Foley team with The Rock to take on Evolution. Mm -hmm. Whilst the match received good reviews from fans, Foley wasn't happy with the match quality and mm. felt he let the fans down by his performance. Foley would discuss his thoughts on the match on his podcast, and this is what the Hall of Famer had to say. And I go from being this guy who had been the, you know, the three-time WWE champion, and I just become somebody who in my mind doesn't belong out there. Oh. And... I, it is what it is. If you guys say it was yeah. very good, I'll trust you to say it was very good, but I can't bring myself to watch that match. I don't wow. think I've ever seen more than 90 seconds of it at a time. Wow. I never, I never even viewed that him being in that match and what he did was bad, but you know, sometimes you are your toughest critic and I, he, I'm guessing probably didn't feel like he lived up to the standards that he was supposed to, you know, present, even though it came off pretty good. For people that wa was watching there and uh, and on television. Number four, Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34. Brock was so oh, unhappy yeah. with his WrestleMania 34 match mm -hmm. with Roman Reigns that he threw his Universal title at Vince McMahon yep. backstage. Whilst this is one of the few people that could ever do something like that disrespectfully to, to Vince. Because the match, no one cared. No one cared about that match at all. It was it just no one cared. Dude walked back there and threw the shit and fucking walked out. At Vince. He threw the title at Vince. Who can do that? And unless you're a top, top guy, we're talking about the, the Rocks, the Stone Colds, the John Cena's of the world. Now the Roman Reigns <laughs> and the Brock Lesnar's. There's not too many people that can get away with doing that bro lesnar's actions may seem drastic he had justification to be annoyed as the main event match was truly atrocious uh, atrocious the crowd had no interest in seeing no a baby cared. face reigns versus a villainous lesnar and they heavily turned on the match yep the fans would chant you both suck and randomly <laughs> chant for other wrestlers yep even when lesnar and reigns incorporated blood into the match didn't matter with disdain from the audience Didn't and nothing no one the duo could do was going to influence the crowd's response Number three, Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 23. Now, this is an interesting Shawn Michaels one. Shawn Michaels' main event match with John Cena at WrestleMania 23 is an all-time classic. But Mr. Great WrestleMania match. himself, he was furious with how the match went. 
Following the match, HBK walked away without shaking the hand of Cena, and this was an off-script outburst from HBK, mm. who just couldn't bear to shake Cena's hand. HBK's anger came from the fact that Cena had forgot to sell his leg throughout the match, and for HBK, oh. that was the main storytelling element of the main event match. According to Dave Meltzer, when HBK got backstage, he began to scream about how terrible he thought the match was, and this opinion was believed to be shared by fellow WWE officials. Wow. Number two, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I never knew that. I never knew <laughs> that was the situation, because that's a fantastic match. Love that match. I never knew that that was... He was upset. I never would have known that. At WrestleMania 14. WrestleMania 14 saw the ascension of Stone Cold Steve Austin to the top of WWE. Austin's match with Shawn Michaels saw Austin pin HBK to win his first WWE title. But Austin has gone on record to state that he hasn't personally been a fan of the matchup. Oh. Speaking on the Up Up Down Down's 2K23 livestream, the WWE Hall of Famer revealed, So to go out there and have a lackluster match with him and in the biggest show of the year, WrestleMania, that was a sold out show and it's a small building compared to nowadays, that was a big deal. When Mike Tyson came in, me and Mike hit it off and he was over. He brought a lot to it, mm -hmm. so it was cool being out there with Mike. Me and Sean could have had a way better match, but he was in a bad place. Mm. He was injured. I was just red hot. When yeah. I got the stunner on him, Mike quick counted me. Yeah. He didn't give me that slow championship pace. Mm. But to answer your question, I hated that match. I love Sean. I have the utmost respect for him, but I don't consider that to be a good match at all. Yeah, because when you watch it back, he did quick count him. I don't think he was so... He wasn't trying to, I don't think so, but he just didn't realize and he quick counted him or whatnot. So I, I can get why Stone Cold would say that. And number one, The Undertaker at WrestleMania 34. Mm. The WrestleMania dream match between The Undertaker yeah. and John Cena finally took place at WrestleMania 34. And going into the match, fans fully expected a lengthy match between the yeah. two legends. Unfortunately, what the fans got was a squash match that was under three minutes in length. To say that this was disappointing would be an understatement. Yeah. And the dead man was incredibly disappointed. Taker had trained for a 45-minute war with Cena, and yeah. he was stunned to find out that Vince McMahon wanted to book a squash match. Taker would discuss this during an interview with Chris Van Vliet, saying, I didn't know it was going to be short till I got there that day. That's so wild. I've trained for a 45-minute war, and all right, here's redemption. Yeah. I'm going to, man, I'm going to, I'm going to light this place on fire. I felt good. And Vince calls me into his office and he goes, okay, he says it's just going to be about five minutes, you know, you're going to squash him. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> and, you know, Vince, he just thought that that was the funniest thing because he knew how hard I'd been training. Well, there you have it, folks. 10 yeah. <laughs> His logic was... He thought it would be the funniest thing because he knew, he knew The Undertaker was going to do whatever he could to put on a fantastic match with John Cena. So instead of giving them at least 20 to 25 minutes, this is a match we had never really seen. John Cena hadn't faced The Undertaker at that point for a long time. It was like when he was on SmackDown when John Cena was a heel. That was like one of the last time he faced The Undertaker. Now, what are we talking about? And you're telling me the only reason why you don't do it is because you knew The Undertaker had been training for a long match and you thought it would be funny for him to go out there and squash him even though you know he'd been training for... I don't even know what to say, bro. Knowing that that's the reason why we didn't get such a classic match. Because Vince thought it would be funny. I don't... <sighs> Comment down below. Let me know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what I want y'all to let me know. Let me know how y'all feel about Vince McMahon's comments there. If those are actually what he said. Let me know. Well, Undertaker said that's what was said to him. Let, let me know how y'all feel about Vince McMahon's rational thinking or irrational thinking of turning that match into a joke because he knew the Undertaker had trained for it. Let me know how y'all feel about that. Y'all know how I feel about it. You can see it on my face. I'm kind of done with the video. 
Appreciate all the love and support. Rhodes on 150k. Still young to be the YouTube wrestling champion of the world and you're in the coach world heavyweight champion. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one.